Good afternoon. I am Dr. G. Murugan Krishnan, Associate Professor, Tripoli, from S. A. N. J. College. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic in electrical engineering, which is the comparison of AC and DC transmission. So, before going to the comparison of AC and DC transmission, we need to start from the area of electricity when DC supply and AC supply were invented. So, one of the famous scientists, Nikola Tesla, who was supported for the DC supply, and uh, one more who is known for the invention of our daily usage, which is Edison, who is supported for the AC supply. So, before going for the comparison of uh, AC and DC transmission, first of all, if you consider for a transmission line installation, we will have problems from the location where they will be installed, right? Because the right of way plays a major role in the urban areas because of the land requirement demand. So, if you consider the DC transmission, there will be only two conductors which will be involved. If you consider the AC transmission, we will have the three conductors that need to be installed for the transmission. So, today we are going to discuss the AC and DC transmission with respect to three main aspects with respect to the economic considerations, second one with respect to the technical performance and third one with respect to the reliability. First of all, wherever we go, we will consider the with respect to the economic consideration. So, which one will be the economic one? So, with a smart graph, it will be very clear that which is the cost versus the distance factor. So, if you have only for a short distance, then what we will prefer most probably is the AC transmission. If you go for a long distance, if you want to transmit the power from one area to another for a long distance, for example about 700 kilometers, so what we would prefer is DC transmission. So this is termed as the cost versus the distance curve for the transmission line that you consider. So here it will be very clear that for the short distance, the AC will be the least cost. And if you, the distance increase long, up to this point, this is termed as the break even distance, up to that point, the cost of AC transmission will be less compared to that of your DC. And above that, if you go for the transmission, the AC power, this electrical power supply, that is transmitter, we will prefer DC. So, the break even distance will vary from 400 to 700 kilometers upon several factors also. So, if you consider the DC transmission, we won't consider the inductance and capacitance because the resistance only will be playing a major role and the power transfer capability will be more in the case if you consider because of the line drops will be less in the DC transmission. Next, considering the terminal equipment cost for the DC transmission also it will be very less compared to that of the DC transmission for long distance if you consider. So this is the graph which shows with respect to the economical point of view. So next thing with respect to the technical performance that is with respect to the technical point of view. So we will consider these five parameters, the stability limits, the voltage control, the line compensation that need to be compensated for the line losses problems of the AC interconnections that we will consider with respect to the AC transmission and the ground impedance which we will consider. So we will see one by one later in this slide. So first one with respect to the stability limits. So power transfer in the AC will depend upon the voltage angle that the angle between the two ends that is we are sending it and we receiving it. Next to that the power carrying capability. So that depends upon the distance that will be explained with a graph which is termed as the power transfer capability with the distance graph. So for a DC it will be a constant one because it won't vary 
with respect to the distance, the power transfer capability won't be in the system. That's why we are preferring in the cost business product, we can be very clear that the for long transmission we prefer DC as it is remaining constant. If you consider the AC up to a certain limit, which is termed as we are surge emitters going, this is the point where we are surge emitters going. Up to that limit for AC, there is no problem, it will be remain constant. Above that, if you go on increasing, with respect to the distance, the power transfer capability will decline. Right? So that's why we will prefer the DC transmission for long distance. This is with respect to the stability limits, and there won't be any stability problems that will arise for long distance transmission in a DC. But if you consider with respect to AC, there will be problems that will be arising with respect to the stability limits if you go for a long transmission line. That is about 700 kilometers. So next to this, which is your voltage control and line compensation, these two parameters will be considered. So in AC, if you consider these two or may to play a major role, which is your line charging and your voltage drops. So due to the line charging, there will be an effect termed as the Ferranti effect, where the listening end voltage will be greater than that of your sending end voltage. So that is one more thing, which is an effect which will be predominant. And the voltage drops will be more if you consider with respect to the AC transmission or long distance transmission. That is about it. Next to that, up to a limit, what I told the flat voltage profile you can maintain only up to the surge impedance load. If you are increasing beyond that, above the surge impedance load, if you are beyond here, then it will decline. The voltage profile will decline. So that is a problem which you will have in the case of your AC for long distance transmission. And the midpoint voltage that will consider between the sending and receiving end, it will be the voltage will be reduced for higher surge in scoring and it will increase, the voltage will increase for lower surge in scoring. And for maintaining a constant voltage, you need to have control over the reactive power also. So to maintain a constant voltage, so we need to inject some reactive power. So that the losses that is due to the inductance of capacitance will have the reactive power right, consumption. So we need to introduce the reactive power into the system so as to maintain the voltage as a constant. So these are with respect to the voltage control thing. And uh, the charging current, which will be a serious problem in the case of your AC transmission. And to work on this, what are the two things that we can prefer is we need to introduce some line compensation devices such as shunt inductors, series capacitors, static wire compensators that is SVC and the advanced one which is your stack that need to be in stack so as to maintain a flat voltage profile in the transmission line so these are the components of the devices that need to be installed in the line next to that we will discuss the two more parameters so the problems of intra conditions and the ground events, the problems of AC lines. So if you want to tie two AC systems, so then we need to have some problems that will be associated with the interconnection. So what are the, those things is we will have a frequent tripping with the presence of large oscillations that will be profile when you are tying two AC lines. So due to that frequent tripping in occur. So increase in the fault level also will occur because of the interconnections of the AC systems. And the magnitude of ground impedance, which is also the last parameter that we will consider with respect to the technical performance point of view, that is with respect to the technical aspects, it will introduce some problems like the telephone interference will occur in the AC transmission lines, that is due to the proximity effect, due to the ground impedance that is present. If you consider DC, what will happen? These effects will be overcome. For example, there will be it will provide zero ground impedance with respect to the DC transmission. So the problems of uh, ground impedance can be eliminated in the case of your DC transmission. So the last thing that we will consider with respect to the this third one reliability. How reliable the transmission will be? DC. So we are considering two terms that we will consider for reliability. One is the energy availability, another one is the transient reliability, how they are performing with respect to the transient conditions, not with respect to steady state conditions. 
first of all, you will discuss the variability with respect to the energy, the availability point of view. So, what will be the energy availability when you have the outages? So, you know very well that when there is a fault, there will be outages, right? To work on this equal outage time with respect to this will be given in terms of the product of the actual outage time and the fraction of the system capacity class to be the outage. So, what level of percentage it will be outage? So, some will be able to provide some 50 percentage, 60 percentage of the supply when they are not having some uh, line, right? So, that is they are not having the power production. Next to that, the transient reliability, which is a one more reliability point of view, which will be considered regarding with respect to the transient conditions, not with respect to the steady state or dynamic conditions that we consider. You know, with respect to the transient time that we consider. So, the performance of the D systems during the recordable falls on the associated A systems will be better compared to that in the case of the transient reliability. So, the energy availability and the transient reliability, it will be about 90, minimum it will be 90 percent, it will be about 95 percent if you consider for DC transmission. So, this is what I want to tell with respect to the comparison of your DC transmission and AC transmission. So, we have considering the work recap of this thing. So, which is the three parameters that we will consider. First one with respect to the economic point of view, that is your economic consideration. Second one with respect to the technical point of view, which is your technical performance. And third one with respect to how reliable the transmission will be. Right? So, with respect to these parameters, so we will have some questions from it. So, first of all, I want to discuss with respect to the transmission, right? So, that is with respect to bulk power transmission, if you consider, which one is the most preferred thing? You may know that it will be the DC transmission. If you consider only for a short distance, for example, if you consider for some less than 400 kilometers, then you can go with the AC transmission, that will be the most preferred one. So, with respect to this, I want to raise one question. And before that, we will discuss some of the limitations. I am telling you with respect to the advantages also only, right? So, there will be some limitations also in the DC transmission. So, what is the thing is, first one is the high cost of the conversion equipments. So, we need to use the inverter and rectifier. When we are converting from the, we have the installations that we have the substations, right? In that, those areas, we need to install the rectifier and inverter. Things. So, which need be the cost will be more. Next to that, in the need to use the transformer, as we know that the transformers for AC device, we cannot use the transformers for DC transmission. Next one, generation of harmonics that will be incorporated when we are transferring this from the AC to DC and from DC to AC at the inverter stations. Next, the requirement of the reactive power that need to be incorporated, that need to be injected into the DC transmission. Next to complexity of the control. So, we have the commutation problems, those things will arise in the case of your DC transmission. How we can overcome this? So, increasing the rating of the thyristors that we are using in the DC converter stations. Next, use of post commutations. Normally, we will have in the AC sub AC, we will have the zero crossing. But in the case of the DC, we don't have any DC. DC zero crossing. So, we need to force it and we need to make the voltage level to be or power level to be zero. So, we need to use a force commutation here. And uh, with the respect to the recent advancements, so applications of digital electronics and uh, fiber optics in the control of the converters, we can incorporate and we can make it more reliable than with respect to the DC transmission. So, these are the limitations, we cannot mention this as drawbacks, these are some of the limitations that we can have in the DC transmission, but they can be overcome with the DC advancements. Right now, uh, the company AEB is working towards the installation for easy transmission of uh, combinations with respect to circuit breakers, DC circuit breakers for up to 500 amps. So, they are having research on this topic. So, if this comes into a major role, then 
DC transmission will play the major role compared to that of AC transmission and uh, the DC will be going to, to the world. So I want to raise some 8 questions with respect to the comparison of uh, DC and AC transmission. So, so this is uh, one of the key questions which we have repeatedly in the K 2008 as well as in 2010 and 12. This is a very important repeated question that we will have it in a minimum of one or two months get question. So high voltage DC transmission is in used form. So these are some of the options that we will have. Bulk power transmission over long distance, interconnecting two systems with the same nominal frequency, eliminating the reactive power requirement in the operation, minimizing the harmonic at the converter stations. All will be very familiar with this because in this lecture I have repeated several times why we were preferring for DC transmission. It is due to the bulk power transmission over long distance. So the option one is the very right one compared with this. I think you have watched the video and it will be very useful compared to that of the comparison with respect to the AC and DC transmission. We can have it in this form of a chart of comparison table also, but all these comparison tables also will be in the with respect to these three parameters that to what we discussed right now. So once again I want to repeat the thing. So the comparison what we have made is with respect to three considerations. One with respect to the economic point of view, which is your economical considerations. Second one with respect to the technical point of view, which is your technical considerations. Third one with respect to the reliability, how to label the transmission medium. So based on this only we have the comparison of the AC and DC transmission. I think you have watched the video. So regarding the comparison chart, you will see in the upcoming videos. Thank you.